So for pretty much the last two years, our go-to gimbal has been the Zhiyun Crane 2. It's super rugged, it's dependable, it supports really heavy payloads. We even used it with our 1DX Mark II with an 85mm 1.2 lens on it and it had absolutely no issues whatsoever. However, we've actually been wanting to sell it for the longest time. While it's an awesome gimbal for short, it is so heavy. It's kind of clunky, you know, it flops all over the place. It's kind of an awkward shape and it doesn't fit into any bag known to human existence in a comfortable way. I just want something that performs similarly to it, but in a smaller, lighter and more compact shape. Well, as if they were able to read my mind, the nice folks over at Feutech reached out to us to see if we would be interested in checking out their new AK2000C gimbal to review, which is a gimbal designed for mirrorless and like kind of lighter weight setup. So before we continue, I just want to say thank you to Lynn over at Feutech for sending us one of these AK2000Cs to review. So this is not a sponsored video or paid review in any form other than them sending out this one to us for free to check out. So with that out of the way, how does this more budget orientated gimbal hold up, especially compared to a big chunky boy like the Crane 2. So thankfully the lockdown situation here in London has improved. Things are starting to open up again and we have been able to actually go out on a few shoots to test what this thing can do and what it can't do. So after using this quite extensively over the last couple of weeks, the short answer is yes, for the price of about $229, the AK2000C is a very capable and very well built gimbal that would be a great option for a lot of filmmakers and video shooters out there with just a few niggling issues holding it back from being like one of the goats. So let's go into the details. So before we do, are there any of you guys using a gimbal? And if so, what are you using? Be sure to let us know in the comments down below. By the way guys, I just realized I forgot to mention the price. So it's about £199 in the UK and about $230 in the US. So it actually makes it one of the most cheapest gimbals on the market right now. Okay, back to the review. So first up is the build quality. So for the price point, I'm actually pleasantly surprised about how nice this feels. So it's made from aluminium, so it's strong, but also really, really lightweight. It weighs at just over one kilogram. So immediately when compared to something like the Crane 2, it doesn't feel as heavy and clunky. A Crane 2 does feel a little bit more premium, a little bit more rugged, but I think for most people in normal, like everyday filming situations, the AK2000C is built well enough. Now, some the buttons like the access locks uh, they do feel a little bit more flimsy so it remains to be seen whether these will stand up to the test of time but as long as you're being reasonable with it I don't see any big issues here. The size and compactness of this gimbal is a huge selling point as it means not only is it easier to carry around but it actually fits in camera bags and it's just a lot more convenient and unobtrusive. It's so much less of a burden to take with me on shoots. The foldable quick release plate is a nice touch as it does make the shape of the gimbal more compact when putting it away and traveling and the access lock stop the gimbal from flailing around as you can see uh, which is something that I really hated about the Zion Crane 2. The lightness does come at a cost though, so depending on what you shoot with, the AK2000C, it supports a payload of up to 2.2 kilograms. That's pretty much fine for most people if you're shooting on a mirrorless. Our A7 III with a Tamron 28-275 combined is about 1.2, so we still have an extra kilo of weight to spare, but things might get tricky if you're using like a bigger lens or bigger bodies with like battery grips and stuff like that. If you're shooting with a heavier setup, this gimbal is not really designed for that kind of thing. So you may need to look elsewhere, but if you're like us and your setup is fairly light to mid range, then this is gonna work great. In terms of the setup and ease of use, it's pretty much like a typical gimbal in the way that you balance your camera by balancing the weight on each of the three axes. I've gotten so used to balancing my camera on gimbal, so it usually doesn't take me more than like a minute to get it all balanced right. What's really neat about this gimbal though is that once it's balanced right, no matter where you place the camera, it stays still, unlike the Crane 2, which only stays balanced in that one place, then it kind of goes back to flopping all over the place. So this is actually really handy because you can you can accidentally damage and even scratch your camera or lens body if it flops over and hits another part of the gimbal. I also love that this comes with a nice OLED screen. It's a touch screen which makes operation and just using the gimbal really easy. So after powering it on, the main menu lets you choose the four different shooting modes. You've got lock, 
pan, pan and tilt, and all follow. You can swipe right and you can use the inception and motion time lapse modes. Right again, and this just takes you to the settings where you can adjust the payload settings, the shooting mode, joystick, calibrations and all that kind of good stuff. You can also swipe left and change some of the camera settings here as well. The joystick itself feels very nice and smooth and responsive and I love this graphic on the screen to indicate the direction that you're going in. And using the provided cables you can also connect your camera and use the additional shortcut buttons to help you record footage, take photos and also to focus. There's also a really handy trigger button at the end which can be held down to activate follow mode. You can double tap to recenter the camera and also triple tap to use the selfie mode. There are also some additional accessories that you can buy like a monopod, there's this vertical grip and also a multi-functional bracket for example to further customize the gimbal for your specific needs. We do have this spare handle which we use to sometimes attach a monitor for our filming usage. All very, very easy and straightforward. If you've ever used any kind of gimbal before, you'll pretty much feel right at home after just a few minutes. The motion time-lapse mode is obviously for shooting time-lapses, but in particular, I really love this inception mode. It gives you this kind of cool spin shot, which would be great for transitions and add a little bit of style and flair to your videos. It is kind of a gimmick, but it's just cool that they've included that for you to use. I also highly recommend getting the app, not only for firmware updates, but you can also use them as a remote control. So this is great for more accurate video work like when you're doing kind of like more macro style stuff you know very handy if you're shooting tech and product reviews like us or if you have the gimbal say on a tripod and you want to do more kind of slower shots now battery wise this thing has an inbuilt battery and charges via USB-C. Once again, this is a nice change of pace over our Crane 2, which used to have, a, I think it's micro USB, and you have to physically remove those big batteries to charge them. Whereas with this, it's all built into the gimbal itself. So Feutech claims a full charge should get you around seven hours of usage. And from our testing, that was pretty much true. And to fully charge it, it takes about an hour and a half. So performance wise, this gimbal has been a real pleasure to use and I've been really impressed with the results we've been able to achieve, whether it's for like static, for walking and even like straight sprinting. The gimbal handled really, really well. It handled all of the footage and all of our needs really well. Just to showcase this, here's a few more samples of shots we took using this gimbal with our A7 III and Tamron 28-75. So what did you guys think of the footage? Be sure to let us know in the comments section below. Now in terms of the cons, there honestly aren't that many cons that I would consider major issues with the AK2000C. Obviously the biggest one, the you know, make it or break it one is the payload uh, being you know probably the number one concern. So if you are you know rocking a heavier setup as I mentioned before, then you may need to look elsewhere. This isn't really designed for you guys, but for most of us using a regular mirrorless and lighter DSLR setups, you know, with reasonably weighted lenses is not an issue. We did test this with our 70 to 200 just to see if it could handle it. And while we could get it balanced kind of, the second you started moving around with it, it just kind of fell apart really. So yeah, definitely not one for heavy lenses. The OLED screen as well, while it's pretty perfectly functional, it's not the most responsive touchscreen I've ever used. It does sometimes take a few swipes before it registers in my fingers, which can be a little bit annoying. And also the handlebar, this handlebar is really nice. This wood finish looks really nice, but it is a little bit slippery. I would prefer a nice rubber or leather grip or something like that, but I may wrap like some bicycle bar tape maybe around this to make it a little bit more easier to grip in the future. But other than that, there's not really a whole lot wrong with this, to be honest, which leads me really nicely to my conclusion. So in short, if you're looking for a smaller and more compact and more lightweight gimbal than the AK2000C pretty much ticks all of the boxes. It's really well built, it's simple, very easy to use. It works really great with our A7 III. We were really happy with the shots we were able to get. And for the price as well, it's kind of a really, really good value as well. If you are using a cinema camera with big heavy lenses, then this isn't the gimbal for you. But for everyone else, 
the Fayutech AK2000C is a really, really good option and one that I would highly recommend you consider. So if you're interested in picking one of these up for yourself, there will be links in the description box below. Once again, a huge thank you to Fayutech and Lynn for sending us one of these to review. That's pretty much gonna wrap up this video. Any questions, do feel free to leave them down there in the comment section below and follow us on socials, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. Like the video if you liked it or dislike it, if that's how you felt, all good. And hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. And other than that, I guess I'll see you on the next video. All right, peace out guys.